The city-smashing, ship-nuking mayhem of Godzilla Minus One is heading straight for your living room. But wait, isn't it already on Netflix? Not this version. Japan's most famous kaiju rampaged across the theatrical landscape in late 2023 and early 2024. And Godzilla Minus One later went on to set a new record when it arrived on streaming and home video, becoming the first movie to debut at the same time in the number one slot on Netflix and as a rental in Apple's iTunes store. This happened after it also became the first film in the Godzilla franchise to be nominated for an Academy Award. The movie ultimately took home the Oscar for Best Visual Effects, beating out Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, The Creator, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Napoleon. It's firmly established that director Takashi Yamazaki's vision for Godzilla is one that resonated with fans across the globe. Critics everywhere lauded the movie, resulting in a near-perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes. Looper's review called the film the exact sort of scary, inspiring, super-entertaining, large-scale popcorn movie we've been missing and dubbed it the blockbuster we needed. And before the summer is over, Godzilla Minus One will be hitting Netflix again, but with one major difference. On August 1st, the black and white version of Yamazaki's acclaimed film Godzilla Minus One Minus Color finally makes its debut on the world's largest streaming service. If you've already seen Yamazaki's terrifying vision of Japan's greatest monster, rest assured that Godzilla Minus One Minus Color is more than a dramatically desaturated kaiju flick. When the movie was re released in its monochromatic state in early 2024, Yamazaki broke down the approach he and his team took in crafting the second version of his film and explained that the end result was a movie that has a very different feel than the original release, he said. Rather than just making it monochrome, it is a cut by cut. I had them make adjustments while making full use of various mats, as if they were creating a new movie. Saying that this meticulous approach imbued the film with an all-new sense of style, he added, What I was aiming for was a style that looked like it was taken by masters of monochrome photography. We were able to unearth the texture of the skin and the details of the scenery that were hidden in the photographed data. By eliminating color, a new sense of reality emerges. During the course of Godzilla Minus One's original monstrous box office run, the movie was re-released in theaters as a black and white film. Though this version was initially released solely for Japanese audiences, Toho quickly made the decision to set it loose in American theaters for a single week in late January. And although a lot of Godzilla fans missed that short theatrical week, those who caught the desaturated version seemed to agree with Yamazaki's assessment. One Redditor said of the re-release, that one scene near the end when you can see the white of Godzilla's eyes just made him look even more freaky in black and white, in my opinion. Such a great experience. Another person singled out Godzilla's early appearance on Odo Island, saying, So many shots were made better in B&W, I think. That first scene with Godzilla especially. The spotlight on him and nothing else was genuinely terrifying. That sentiment seemed to resonate with a lot of viewers, with another person adding, The opening scene genuinely felt like it was ripped straight out of a horror movie when it was shown in black and white. So is it really worth the time to rewatch Godzilla cause ruin and destruction in black and white when we all paid good money to watch movies on our high-def, big-screen, color televisions? You can decide for yourself if the king of the monsters really is scarier in black and white when Godzilla Minus One Minus Color hits Netflix on August 1st, 2024.